here we have our free version of Hoboware open on our desktop and we're going to connect to our energy logger with the TRMS module connected which TRMS stands for true RMS and we're going to configure that module so we have our preferences all set so we can communicate with this device using our keyspan USB to serial adapter and if we click on launch device Hoboware sees it's connected to our virtual COM port COM4 and we'll get into the launch logger window. So here's our launch logger window as we described in the previous video and we can see now that we have our TRMS module connected. Notice we have two channels in each uh, TRMS module. The, the logger will support installation of up to three of these through, their, uh, through the, the uh, bus on the top of the logger. Here's the serial number of that module. Note that when you have multiple modules installed in the energy logger, they are a, a, aligned in this sensors to log area in hierarchical serial number order, meaning the lowest serial numbers at the top moving forward up to the highest. It makes no difference as to where those modules are plugged in on the uh, physically plugged into the top of the logger. They are, assigned, they are aligned in the data and in Hoboware by serial number of the module or of the sensor. And that's the same for smart sensors. If you plugged in your smart sensors in what you thought was slot number one, quote unquote, in the bus, that it really makes no difference. It's a bus. Hoboware assigns or aligns them by serial number, not by physical location. So here we have two, this one module, two channels configured. The input to the TRMS module, it's looking for an AC, a very low voltage AC signal from either a current transformer or a potential transformer. So these need to be scaled in order to uh, read out in your correct engineering units. Again, this is the free version of Hoboware. Uh, the the um, Hoboware Pro looks exactly the same, except you'll see a, a KWH assistant here, which would be grayed out because that only works with pulses, and this device is, is an analog type device. Again, AC input. To scale the first input, the uh, channel one of this module, click on the little box here, and you'll see it'll say configure this sensor. This takes us to the first configure sensor window. So we can see here's our, our port name or our module name, our firmware revision, uh, the serial number of that module, and sensor number one, which is channel one. We can assign a name, a name to that sensor. We have some canned um, or, or predetermined configurations uh, or sensor names, so voltage or current. Uh, again, if you're if you have a potential transformer connected to this device it would be voltage if you have a current transformer connected to this device it could be current or you can call it something else by clicking on custom and you could say circuit number one or something right so we say circuit one if we say save this value for the next time it will be stored in Hoboware so it will be available the next time uh, when we're reconfiguring the module click on okay Below that, this is where we set our relationship between the raw output of that transducer and the actual uh, engineering units we want to recommend. We want to be reflected in the data. So either AC current or AC voltage. Before I get into the scaling parameters, just down at the bottom of the screen, we have some buttons. Help takes us to the help screen. Cancel cancels out of this screen. If we click on load, this goes out to, there's a folder in your Hoboware public files folder under my documents that include pre-configured files for different types of sensors that we currently sell that are compatible with this device. So you can see here, this is a, a 20 amp CT, a 50 amp CT, a 100 amp CT. These are the, the, T, uh, the ACT sensors. We also have pre-configured for the Magnalab versions, the 5 amp, 10 amp, 20 amp. So if, you, if you're if you using one of these sensors that you purchase from us, you can simply select that. Here's a, there's the um, 
the ACT 100, the 100 amp CT, if you just click on that little radio button and click continue, notice now that our scaling is configured correctly. It did take out our circuit name, our sensor name, but we can put that back in if we want to. There we go. So now we have a relationship set up in here where zero output of that CT equals zero amps. 333.33 millivolts AC output, which is full scale, equals 100. And then our data will refer, represent it, be represented by 0 to 100 um, amps rather than 0 to 333 millivolts. If you don't run this scaling, if you don't scale these TRMS modules, your raw data will just be the voltage output of, this, of the, the transducer, which is typically 0 to 333 millivolts. When we click on configure, this configuration is written to the module and it stays in that module. It's sticky. So even if you pull this module out after you configure it and put it in a different logger, that configuration is still in that module. If you have a sensor, a, a current transformer, that you purchased from someone else, you can manually scale this. Again, it has to have that 333.33 millivolt output, which is pretty standard for current transducers and, and potential trans, uh, transducers or transformers. So, for example, if this was a 1,000-amp uh, CT or something, you can put in your own scale factor. And again, you would click Configure to send that configuration to the uh, module. You could also save this configuration as one of your own personally made configuration files. So if we click on that, there's all our configuration files that come with, uh, get installed when you install HoboWare, but maybe you want to call this a thousand amp configuration or something like that. So you can save this for future use. And now that's saved and now we can click configure to load this into the module. And we should get a successful Message, it says configuration successful. Would you like to configure the next channel? Um, for this exercise, I won't do that. Keep in mind that when this configuration is written to the module, which we just did, it's sticky in that module. So you can configure the module and remove it from the logger and put it in another logger, and this configuration for that module will re be retained. So uh, if you have multiple modules and you want to configure them for different applications and leave those configurations in those modules, they will stick. Now that we've saved our configuration to the module, we can see our scaling and our changes have been reflected here for channel one. And we're ready to connect up our current transformer and get started. We can disable the other channel if we're not using it, just by unchecking it. HoboWare goes out, scans the sensor bus, and reflects that this is turned off. You can only turn off one of the two available channels in your, in your module. Um, otherwise, you get this error message. It says at least one channel must be enabled. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why you wanted to disable two channels if you can just remove the module. But anyway, that's you can only disable one. One other point to... With the TRMS module, this device does support sampling. So under sampling, we can set a sampling interval for this device, and it will go out and, uh, again, in this instance, with this configuration, with a one-minute logging interval and a one-second sampling interval, the logger will wake up. It basically stay awake the whole time, and it will base the one-minute logged data, the interval data, will be based on the average of 60 one second samples. And you can play around with these measurements again. The fastest you can sample is once a second. Keep in mind with that one second sampling interval, your battery life will be greatly diminished from the estimated one year battery life uh, if you're just using battery. This particular device comes with an optional AC power source. And when you use that AC power source, the batteries are only used for backup. So if you're going to use this in an application like this where you need to sample every second, strongly recommended you use that AC power source so that you don't uh, lose power.